Let's talk about eyelid twitching. We've all had it. You've stayed up late, you're super stressed out, and your eye just starts to twitch a little bit. It's a condition called myokymia, and it's usually completely benign. It's typically the lower eyelid. It's self-limiting, so it usually resolves on its own. But when is facial twitching just something a little bit more than that? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 57-year-old woman who came to my office with these same complaints that started several years ago, but it's gotten worse over the years, and now it involves her whole face. It's on one side of her face and involves her eye all the way down into her chin. She was initially told it was just a facial tick, so she didn't seek any other treatment but it's gotten so bad, it's even affected her vision. An MRI of her brain was ordered and it shows this finding. It's a subtle finding that could be missed if you don't know what you're looking for, but she has compression of her facial nerve by her left vertebral artery, causing something called hemifacial spasm. It's a disorder that can be confused with other facial movement disorders, including facial tics, dystonia, focal seizures, blepharospasm, or even Bell's palsy. And some people even get misdiagnosed with Tourette's syndrome. So let's dive a little deeper into this diagnosis. It's most commonly seen in the fifth and sixth decades of life. It usually only involves one side of the face. It typically starts with eyelid contractions and can over the years develop into spasms of the entire face. An MRI of the brain should be performed to rule out things that can also compress the facial nerve, such as a tumor. It's caused from irritation of the facial nucleus. It's a part of our brainstem where the facial nerve is derived and it can get hyper excitable or fire spontaneously by irritation of that nucleus. After the facial nerve exits the brainstem, it supplies all the different varying muscles to one side of our face and causes contraction or movement of that side of the face. So things that can compress on it, like a brain tumor, can cause this to happen and there are other non-compressive pathologies like strokes or multiple sclerosis plaques that can also cause this to happen. In most circumstances, it's caused by an aberrant blood vessel that can compress this nerve and with pulsations of the vessel, will cause hyperexcitability of that region and cause the nerve to fire spontaneously and give you these facial spasms. The most common demographic is women in their 40s and 50s, but can happen across any age range. It can cause loss of vision because the obicularis oculi or the muscle surrounding the eye can become contracted and you can't see out of that eye. Earlier in the disease process, it can sometimes be hard to differentiate this between myokymia or even a tick disorder. Like I mentioned before, myokymia is a small little twitch under the skin that extends in a wave-like pattern. Ticks are usually brief, repetitive, and coordinated. An EMG test can often be helpful in making the diagnosis. We will perform an MRI of the brain to help rule out other potential sources, including a brain tumor. Even though a lot of cases are from blood vessels that can compress it, it's rare to actually see it on the MRI. Well, once we make the diagnosis, how do we treat it? I mentioned that our patient tried a medication called Tegretol. That's an anti-seizure medication that will help reduce firing of the nerve. So it can help, but on the contrary, it can cause you to be sleepy. Other medications like muscle relaxers can also help. I also mentioned that she tried Botox injections. You mean the shots that prevent wrinkles? Yes, because Botox works to help paralyze muscles, including the muscles in our face that can cause wrinkles. So if you have a muscle in the face that's spontaneously contracting, you can put Botox in the muscle to prevent it from moving. But that can also have side effects because it can cause your face to be weak and even cause your eyelid to droop. And over time, it stops working as well. So it's not really a fix. So if this is true hemifacial spasm, the patient fails conservative treatment, they can get evaluated by a neurosurgeon to see if a microvascular decompression may be an option for them. A micro what? It's actually brain surgery where we make a small hole in the skull to make a corridor down to the brainstem. We identify where the facial nerve exits off the side of the brainstem and find the arterial compression or the artery that's compressing the nerve. We can then place a small sponge or a pad between the artery and the nerve to give it cushioning so it's no longer compressed. And if you watch my other case studies, this is a very similar surgery we do for a condition called trigeminal neuralgia. 
It's because the pathophysiology behind that disease process is very similar to this, only it affects the fifth cranial nerve called the trigeminal nerve. There are risks to any surgery, but in 85% or more of the time, this completely resolves the patient's symptoms. Here's an example of a patient before and after surgery for hemifacial spasm. In our patient's case, I referred her to a skull-based neurosurgical specialist who performed this microvascular decompression, and two months later, all of her symptoms are completely resolved. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week, and I'll go through another case.